Now my winter boating season has started. I tend to keep to the sheltered waters of the sea lochs, and although I love Loch Etiv, I also enjoy a bit of variety. Loch Leven is less than an hour's drive from the house, and as I wanted to take the drone for a walk on Ely and Mund, an island in the loch, it was my port of call for this video. I was using my 2.75 metre F rib inflatable, as it is so easy to park in a lay-by, then carry the boat down the banking to the shore. I don't bother with transom wheels in the boat, as they are totally useless on most surfaces I launch from. I'm using my auxiliary outboard, a 3.2 horsepower Mariner, two stroke which weighs only 12 kilograms. I have three reasons for this. One, I'm using up all two stroke fuel that I mixed up with oil two years ago. It still works perfectly well as you'll see in the video although it's E5 petrol and not E10 petrol. Second reason is I like the auxiliary to be used every so often, as outboards that don't get used can cause issues if you want them to work in an emergency. The third reason is my usual outboard for this boat, a 6 horsepower Yamaha 4-stroke, is awaiting parts to arrive. The gearbox seal started to leak after some fishing line wrapped around the prop shaft. The outboard started in second pool, although I did start it at home in a bucket two days previously, just to make sure. It's a reliable outboard, but very noisy compared to my 6 horsepower 4 stroke, and it stinks of burnt 2 stroke oil if you have a sensitive nose. I gave it plenty of time to warm up, as I rode beyond the seaweed rising from the seabed, and then I was off, heading across Loch Even to Ely and Mun. Of course, I can only go at displacement speeds with this small outboard. I have to trim the boat differently, so sit at the back of the boat. That way, my weight holds the bow up. When I use a 6 horsepower and go in the plane, I have to sit well forward, the planing action holding the bow up. It was a heavy overcast and uninspiring morning for taking video footage, but I wasn't complaining as it was forecast for light winds. I was well wrapped up for the cold east wind and headed straight for the landing stage on Alien Mund, passing the island of discussion on the way. As soon as I landed, I let the drone loose, keeping a close eye on the seagulls that I had watched earlier mobbing a crow, presumably because it had entered their territory. However, the gulls remained in their perches and ignored the drone. I eased it over the small islands to the north of Alien Mund, the island of discussion, which I will discuss later as the farthest away island. I then turned the drone and took a look at Alien Mund itself. It is often referred to as the Island of the Dead, because there are around 300 gravestones in a small island of the village of Glencoe. Having set the scene for my visit to the island, I brought the drone back and then sat back and slipped a coffee, before heading around this poignant place. The island is a traditional graveyard, but one choose by the Stuarts of Balahulish, the Macdonalds of Glencoe, and the Camerons of Calarp. The last burial taking place in 1973, a local resident from Glencoe Village. Most headstones come from a nearby Balahulish quarry, slate with ornate writing. Perhaps the most famous of the many tombs in the island is this one, made with stone from John MacDonald's house in nearby Glencoe. John was McKeon's eldest son, and McKeon of Glencoe was chief of Clan MacDonald, who was buried here after the massacre of Glencoe in 1692. Yet still my lonely spirit soars amid 
with the mountains and the glen from my ancestral burial ground. I am Makian. The name MacDonald echoes still within the hearts of Highland men. My restless soul will never sleep. To the western end of the island is the remains of a building, believed to have been St. Fintan Mundus' church. The island is named after him, and he was an Irish disciple to St. Columba. The church burned in 1495, but was rebuilt and was in use until July 1693. The reason people are no longer buried here is because there is very little soil. The graves are shallow and sit in the island bedrock. People's ashes are still spread in the island though. Yet still my lonely spirit soars Amid the mountains and the glen From my ancestral burial ground I am a of highland men my restless soul will never sleep I am a Kia. Having seen what I came to see I paid my respects and left the dead in peace then took a tour round the island by boat I smiled to myself passing the island of discussion. For hundreds of years, arguing members of the MacDonald clan were sent to the island by the clan's chief and had to remain there until their disputes were resolved. They were given an ample supply of whiskey and cheese, and the majority of disputes were resolved amicably. I continued eastwards along the loch until I reached the Narrows, which were approximately halfway along the loch length. I landed for lunch and to let the drone loose again. Then after my lunch I continued through the Narrows, heading for the end of the loch at Kinloch Leaven. Although it was a dull day, the autumn trees were full of colour, against a lovely backdrop of high mountains, some reaching almost 4,000 feet high.
The spin several years since sporting in Loch Leven, so I am sorry to see this shot now a ruined hull. I recall the first time I saw it, perhaps 15 years ago, and it was stored in land in the exact same place. It looked in perfect condition back then, and I don't think it's moved since. I do recall admiring it. What a waste. I was now at the end of the loch, so I pulled into a sheltered bay and once again let the drone have a nosy around. I am a I happily headed back the way I came, travelling a total distance of 15 miles. The only other sight I saw on the way back was the slowly decaying carcass of a small whale, which surprised me seeing it so far up a sea loch. Its dorsal fin and head had been removed, so I have no idea which type. Perhaps a pilot whale or small minke. Not long later I was back at the car, have enjoyed a lovely off-season day's boating. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. <laughs>